Hello everyone, thank you for visiting me in my shop today. My name is Daryl. Today on the bench we have attic baffles. Now attic baffles, if you don't know what they are, they go up in here. And each one of these little slots, I guess you might call them. And I'm getting uh, prepped for insulation. I'm gonna insulate my ceiling and the insulation is on order. I don't know when it's going to be here, but I want to be ready for it when it does get here so I can start insulating. I have no heat in my shop and it's about time that I get it insulated and maybe get some heat in here. So I have 40 of these, 40 of these baffles to put in. Um, there's an issue with these baffles and there's going to be an issue with, I think, any of the baffles that I buy off the shelf. And it's not caused by the baffles themselves. The issue is with the way this building was constructed. So I'll climb the ladder and show you what the problem is. Okay, I'm up on the ladder right now in one of the bays. And here's the problem that I have. You can see that the floor joist or the ceiling joist comes across and it meets up here. Well, instead of being on the same plane, it's overlapped. And it's overlapped on every single one. So what that does is it makes the gap between here and here a lot less than 23 inches. So what I got to do to these uh, baffles is cut them down to kind of retrofit them in. It's going to be a pain. Uh, it's not going to look exactly the way I would like it to look, but I think overall it'll do the job. So let's get started cutting some of these up and let's install a couple and see what they look like and we'll go from there. Okay, we're back here on the ground. Now these baffles are 23 inches wide and we know that we can't fit these up there the way they are now. So I measured the distance that I need to cut it down and the, what I have to work with up there is 20 and 3 quarter inches. So you can see that I'll have to cut some off. And then I'll have to do some measuring to find out how far up, up here at the very tip of my tape here, where I'll have to notch across here and cut this section out. So let's do that. I'll go measure and then we'll come and cut one up and see what it looks like. All right, I got this baffle cut. It's laying up there dry fit. Uh, it looks like it's gonna work like this. Now these particular baffles are made for, for uh, two by four construction. So this length here is made for two by four truss, trusses. I don't have that. So let me climb the ladder up, or up the ladder, and see, and show you what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna come up here with it. Now it's still gonna have a gap up here, up in here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna staple this, staple these in here, uh, real nice like. I'll be stapled up in here. Now these are two by six boards, and then it comes in here like this. So I think that will hold back the insulation properly and we'll get one stapled up there and we'll come back and look at it. And if we agree that it looks good, I'll do them all like this. Let's staple this. All right, I do have one up. Um, these are my tools of choice. Uh, power stapler and the manual stapler. Um, what I did was I took my first one and I laid it on top of the one I put up and used it as a template for cutting. So I, I cut this out right along this seam. I cut up here to the first section. Up here, the same. I moved it over and cut uh, what it'd be about an inch and a half or so off. Inch and a half, maybe inch and a quarter. I don't remember. Uh, cut it up all the way to this second joint. 
and then I angled across from here down to make it up in this spot right here, right there, where this one comes across. So I had room. So let's go walk up the ladder, climb up the ladder, and take a look at what I did. So it just comes in here, and then it's stapled. And then down here, I just put some staples at the very end. That's the best I could do to get in there on that stapler. So uh, it's looking pretty good. It's not quite the way it was engineered, but I think it will do the job. I, might, I thought about putting some staples up in here, but if I ever have to remove the roof decking, it won't pull these up. If I don't put a staple in there, it won't pull them up. And I think once the drywall or once the uh, insulation is in, these aren't going to move anywhere. There's no reason to go overboard with them. But uh, I think that'll work. So I've got uh, 18 more to cut on this side and then another 20 to cut down for the other side of the shop. So I think I'm going to cut all of them first and then, you know, put them up. Um, I might not have to cut all of those, all 18, because up in here, I'm going to have to do some more cutting. This one looks like a full one, but I'm not sure about that side over there, if that's going to be a full one. I think it should be, but we'll see when I get to them. But yeah, I'll probably just put them on in every single bay, of course. And right now, there's no soffit vents on the, on the building at all. Um, that's something I'm going to add later. Right now, it's got a peak vent, and it's got these two gable vents on each side or each end and uh, those are going to go away so this is where we're at right now i'm going to cut these up and then install them so let's get to it well i got nine bays done it's been about a half an hour got nine done this one over here, I'm gonna to have to remove my clamp rack so I can get this one here on the end. By far the number one problem I've had is the staples. Maybe the pneumatic stapler is not the best way to go. Um, I think they make an upholstery stapler that the staples might be, it might be a little bit more useful. I don't know if they consider an 18 gauge stapler an upholstery stapler, I really don't know, but something with a little uh, more uh, area for the staple. Does that make sense? Uh, it would grab a little bit more plastic, maybe a wider staple, but not, I'm going quarter inch deep. Um, the problem is the plastic just, the poly just can't take it. Uh, so sometimes I had to put in double, you know, try it twice to get a staple to, to hold properly. They show in the instructions using uh, like a, a little stapler like this one, which is I, I am using this too, but um, maybe I'll try it. It just seems like a pain trying to wield that thing in there and try to knock these in, but I don't know. I'll try it. I just thought the pneumatic would be an easier, faster way to go, but it's a little bit of a pain. And I have some measurement error over here where uh, this corner, right, this one right here, um, they didn't quite get it 24 inches on center. So I had some issues on these two. Actually, all, all across it was a little off. But uh, I got them all in, the first nine in, so not too bad. That's almost a quarter of the shop. <laughs> so uh, we'll continue to work on them, and then uh, I'll come on back. All right, day two of baffle installation. My tool of choice today is this power stapler. I had trouble yesterday with a pneumatic uh, staple gun. Uh, the staples were going right through this thin poly. So most of them work, but uh, too many for my comfort level went through. So I'm gonna try this stapler which is kind of what the manufacturer suggested anyway. 
So I will try it. I got nine of them in yesterday. I got to pull down this clamp rack over here and do the corner. I moved the car out of the way. And now I can do these uh, 11 and get those in. And then I move over to the other side of the shop. So let's see if we can get some of these in today. And I'm not going to try to hold the camera while I do this. So I'll just make periodic uh, reappearances <laughs> and uh, we'll discuss what's going on. Okay, welcome back. I got them all up. I am really excited about this. I got them all in on this one side. Now I got to do the other side. <laughs> uh, the end baffles were not fun. Uh, there was a lot of cutting I had to do to make them fit in there, but I got them all in. So this side is ready to go. So now I turn my attention to this side. And there's some obstacles in the way, like that blue cabinet. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get around it, or do I have to take it all down? I'm not going to like that. If I had to take it down, I know my wife's not going to like it because she's going to have to help me carry it or lift it off the French cleat I got it on. So that's where we're going to next. <laughs> 